Okay, so this is a video all about the levels of protection when it comes to respirators. So we're going to look at stuff that's next to useless, uh, up into the stuff that gives you almost complete protection. So start off with one of these, did a video on these the other day. The sort of dust masks. Now we're going to assume with everything that we show that they have the best filters you can put on them. So for something like this it's going to be P3. For the um, half face mask it's going to be ABEC P3 and with the gas mask for example. Just for the uh, argument's sake of what the masks themselves offer, not in ways of filters. So, these you simply put over your head. People were saying to me the other day, you can bend the you know, metal to fit around your nose like that. Yes, that does help at the top, but I've still got a gap where my thumb is at the chin. And if I breathe out, I can actually, you know, feel air coming out of various bits behind the mask. So, uh, the interesting thing I was reading is in the UK, these are known as um, basically nuisance dust masks for the most part. And these are designed um, primarily, if you use them for their proper use, if you're working in an environment that's got a bit of dust that's not really going to be harmful to you. So you put these on just to cut down on a bit of the dust getting into your respiratory system, you know, just to avoid coughing and sneezing and things. However, if you are, according to health and safety sort of compliance boards, I was reading this, you can't actually issue these as an employer. Um, it's against the law to issue one of these as an employer if you're in any sort of environment where the dust can cause long-term health problems. In that case, you have to go with a half-face respirator, not one of these. So, in theory, these should be fine, but the issue with them is, because it's essentially just a giant particulate filter for the entirety of the mask, the issue is, as I've said before, there are gaps around the sides of these. So these aren't actually adequate, as I've experienced from using them myself. Some of them don't even have that bit you can bend on the nose. They're good in environments where you want to cut down on a bit of normal dust getting into you. But as soon as you're in an environment where, you know, there's actually going to be more than stuff you want to breathe in, stuff that could cause you lung damage you know, or other nasties if you breathe it in, you do not want one of those on, simply because, firstly, as I said, you can never get a proper fit to them, even if you bend the metal and do everything like that, there's still going to be gaps at the side, gaps at the bottom, because it's held on via elastic bands and it doesn't contort to your face. So there's that, and the fact that most of them are held on by elastic bands is a bit worrying. I was saying something in the comments the other day on the other video, I was wearing one in a really dusty environment and when the elastic bands snapped and it fell off my face. So then, you know, I'm going to be inhaling 100% of that dust till I get out of there. So, they're not good masks. They're fine, as said, for light work where the dust is it's just more of an inconvenience than anything. But you should never be using them if you actually are exposed to something dangerous. So, now we're going to look at the half face mask. And as said, we're going to assume there's ABEC P3 filters on for the sake of argument of what we're talking about regarding respirators. But if I can untangle the straps that are entirely tangled up. There we go. So, obviously, half face masks. These are much, much better simply because they make a proper fit around your nose and mouth. Which means that you have, you know, a lot more protection when you've got one on. So, I'm going to put this one on now. Then do up the back strap. There we go. So, hopefully you can clearly see from me having this on. And I'll just get the top bit to the right level of my head. There we go. That these give you a much better level of protection, or if you've got the particulate filters on, or the ABEC filters, or whatever. You've got um, full-on filters, even if we assume the dust mask was a P3 filter, and these are the P3 filters. Because these can talk to your face, and you can elasticate the straps and everything, um, you know, rather than being held on with elastic bands, you've actually got properly, you know, done straps on these masks. It gives you a much, much better seal because of the simple fact that, of course, you're actually, you know, got a properly shaped thing to the shape of your face, and you've got rubber that gives a bit, so that rubber will actually pull the mask tight to your face and make an airtight seal. So, masks like this are very good, 
assuming you have the right filters on for the job, so in the sake of the video, as I said, we're going to argue that in every mask you've always got the best possible filter on it, the combination filter. Um, these are absolutely fine for industry use. They're used a lot by industries because, again, they do a much better face seal. You can do a fit check by holding your hand over the exhale valve and see if the mask swells up when you breathe out. And, yeah, as I said, these are very, very good. As long as you're not working with anything that's going to get in your eyes, again, you could wear goggles separately, but that's getting to the point where you're going to want a full face respirator rather than one of these. So next we have the full face respirator. So this protects your eyes, and often, you know, they these if they're military ones, are designed for chemical warfare, so they're built, you know, to last. They're like resistant from blister agents and things like that. Whereas half face respirators for industry aren't really going to do that. Uh, it's, this is only an ABE P3 filter in the video, but you could have an ABEC P3 full-on CBRN filter on the mask. So obviously, as I said, goes really without saying. That a mask like this offers better protection again than a half-face respirator. You can make a good full-face seal. The seals that you know are like 99% effective, because as I've said before, a mask like this is always going to get small little gaps around it, uh, even if you get the best ones that fit your face. But you've got the big filters on there that should last a while that you can swap out and give you very good levels of protection. As well as obviously the mask giving you good levels of protection because you've got both your eyes guarded and all of your face. So, obviously, full face masks are a big step up again from a half mask but not in terms of necessarily what they filter, but simply because they give you full face protection. Now once we've got past a full face air purifying respirator, aka a gas mask, we are now on to the actual sort of rebreathers and air supplying respirators. Now as far as I'm aware in protection level, an air supplying respirator, such as a firefighter's mask, or some of the sort of lab equipment where you have an oxygen tank or an oxygen supply line plugged into the mask, those although they offer obviously much better protection than their purifying respirator because of the fact that they have positive pressure in them supposedly rebreathers offers the accent you know actual maximum level of protection so here i have a soviet ip5 rebreather um, i don't have all the rebreather equipment to go with it i've got this bulky thing around my chest um, i just pan the camera down a bit you'll be able to see that better um, which is all of the actual rebreather stuff the actual unit would have gone in there basically how they work and I still can't give you a really perfect explanation of this as many times I've been told it by other people you breathe out obviously when you inhale you inhale oxygen with nitrogen and everything else and when you exhale you exhale mostly carbon dioxide um, what a rebreather does is the rebreather unit uses some sort of chemical thing to scrub the air you exhale of most of the carbon dioxide so when you're inhaling it you're inhaling so you know it's this is what the bladder does around your neck or the lungs whatever you want to call it it's basically you're doing a chemical process to get clean air back mostly cleaner there's lots of dangers with rebreathers because if you have the chemical unit attached to it regardless of that exploding which they can do if you get them wet um, the main dam uh, danger of rebreathers is suffocation due to uh, supposedly as far as I'm aware because people have again explained to me a lot of times and I don't get the exact science behind it but because it's scrubbing the carbon dioxide out, the air's getting thinner and thinner. But you can't, because there's not a build-up of carbon, monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide even, you can't actually tell that you're suffocating until it's too late. So rebreathers are really dangerous. So I said, I've not got that unit on, so I can't suffocate. Let's see if I can get this thing on, because it's really tight. And that's not supplying me with air, so uh, no. But yeah, if it had the air supply unit on it, basically what would happen is that um, obviously I'd be able to breathe clean in air in and out. But how these work, I said, is you have to have them plugged into a box, and then these would offer very good levels of protection because you basically, for a certain amount of time, I have no idea what it is off the top of my head, and it would vary from rebreather to rebreather. 
you basically have an oxygen supply that can last longer than an oxygen tank um, and you know it's a completely closed circuit with a rebreather so they offer the very best level of protection if you're wearing a sort of full hazmat gear um, you know you're completely immune to chemicals basically and things like that but as I said these aren't practical it's a big bulky thing I haven't got the chemical unit on it I wouldn't want the chemical unit on it simply for the fact that there's so much that can go wrong with them it's a very easy way to kill yourself supposedly you know, people who are trained to use rebreathers need a lot of training in their use. I think you're meant to use them with other people as well for the most part. So, you know, you can keep checking on each other to make sure nobody's actually suffocating and not realising it. Um, so, you know, air supplying respirators with an oxygen tank where you can look at a dial and see how much oxygen you have are much more practical for the most part. But yeah, there you go. That's everything from a dust mask up into a rebreather on the tiers of... Um, protection that respiratory equipment can give you.